How are you doing, Victoria? We're here. I'm doing great this doing, very overcasted afternoon. How's it going? Good. Very overcasted Good, you afternoon. know, How's healthy. Going? Um, Good. home. Good, you know, yeah. could, healthy. could be worse. Um, yeah, definitely. Home. But, you know, we're here. We're here as a community joining online for some, you know, yeah. communal activities. This is a new way to, you know, hang out with people. Yes, welcome to the first episode of Need to Know um, with lovely Victoria here. Um, tell us about what the show is going to be. Uh, so Need to Know, it's um, we're just going to be taking some very basic at-home pantry items and you know utilizing ways to make really easy and delicious uh, snacks. I'm going to kind of talk about break down ingredients as I'm going through, educate about the science behind some ingredients. Um, you know, it's easy to kind of throw something together, but to kind of have that knowledge and background behind why the whys of cooking is really fundamental to kind of help, you know, elongate your knowledge for the future. So I'm here to kind of break down recipes and say why they work. That's awesome. I am ready to learn about them. Um, tell us why you're an expert. What do you do? Tell us a little bit about your background and, and, um, you know, what you've done in the past and, and, you know, why, why we're going to learn so many awesome things from you. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm still trying to become an expert in my field. Obviously there's always more to learn. Um, but I am, uh, the pastry sous chef of a Michelin star restaurant, um, you know, furloughed at the moment, but we'll go back to work once all of this is through. Um, but I am the pastry sous chef over there where we make everything from chocolate work, gelatos, plated desserts, um, bread, the whole nine yards. And, uh, I kind of got into this industry, actually I got into this industry. Um, I guess it started when I was a kid, I got an easy bake oven as a gift and that kind of sparked my joy for, um, self-learning. And I ended up going to business school, ended up going to culinary school and everything kind of led me into the tracks of where I am now of you know, helping run a, a fantastic department of um, a big team at a really great restaurant. So, you know, all my skills have led me to this. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I'm sure, you know, it's obviously like this pandemic has impacted businesses of all sorts, but um, restaurants, I think, more than um, a lot of other businesses. Um, tell us what that's been like for you and, and friends who you work with and just a little bit about what people are doing. Yeah, uh, to be frank, it's, you know, incredibly unnerving in, a, in an industry where hospitality is our bread and butter. Um, you know, we go in and thrive off of nurturing through food and the community behind the kitchen, you know, more the, often than not. You know, we spend 60, 80 hours, you know, during our busy season in the kitchen and those people turn into our family. So it's been very difficult kind of adapting to a life where you spend more time in your workplace that is your home and now we're just home um but it's it's definitely been eye-opening in regards to how much an industry is willing to band together to help each other out um and those little bits and pieces have been really rewarding to watch in regards to even just seeing communal pages on social media is kind of banding together to help out other cooks you know even on my end i work at a restaurant del posto and we've band together to get GoFundMe pages for our hourly employees and making sure that they're getting family meals as often as possible. And, um, but yeah, the uncertainty behind where all this is going to go after is it's really daunting and overwhelming. Um, so it's kind of one of those things that we're taking day by day and initiatives are popping up from leaders in our industry left and right. And it's just a matter of trying to stay as educated as possible with how to help cushion the blow. Um, once we can get back to work. For sure, for sure. Well, um, you know, I think it's a couple things. First of all, if anybody's watching this, um, go support the, what's the GoFundMe page? Can you let people um, know so they can? Yeah, 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 so if you guys go on social media, it is called Del Posto Family Fund. Um, if you guys follow me at Torxer, um, I have posted about it as well. And the Del Posto Instagram page has plenty of information about it. Um, but, you know, there are plenty of 
you know, not just my restaurant, but Roar Relief has been really fantastic. Um, the James Beard Foundation has been helping raise money um, for people in our industry that have been hurting. And then, you know, pretty much every restaurant, it's, it's really sad to see that we kind of have to work for these community fundings, but, you know, it's kind of what's happening and it's been working. So yeah, check those guys out. Del Posto Family Fund, James Beard Fund, Roar Foundation are all great. If you can make a donation, go do it, please. Um, also, we have a donate button below. Um, so, you know, check that out too. Um, I think luckily for us though, you have a kitchen at home and yeah. show God. us something that, um, you know, that we can do at home and follow along. I think for, you know, future episodes, we're going to get sort of what is going to be made for that day. Um, so anybody watching can go out and get ingredients beforehand and follow along and, you know, make this more of a a uh, very tutorial thing. We will take our time. People can ask questions. Tell us to slow down in the comments if we're moving too fast. Tell us to speed up if we're moving too slow. So um, we really want this to be um, educational for everybody watching so you can learn how to make some really fun new stuff and um, also, you know, entertaining. We'll have some fun doing it. So um, what are we going to be uh, what are we going to be making today? So today I, um, you know, on my personal social media account, I have been posting a lot of things that I've been cooking in this recipe kind of, although it's relatively basic, sparked the most interest in regards to methodology. So I figured I'd start with this, but it's buttermilk pancakes, um, which I think are, you know, everyone should know how to make them. I am definitely, they are near and dear to my heart, one of my favorite foods, um, shamelessly enough. And uh, I figured I would start with some a really great recipe that isn't out of a box. Um, super simple to make, but it does take a little bit of patience. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to make some buttermilk pancakes with caramelized bananas. So it's going to be good. Pancakes are such a comfort food for me. I just feel like, I don't know, I feel like a kid when I eat pancakes. I love pancakes. No, I feel you on that. It's definitely one of those things I try not to eat so often because it is um, pretty much dessert for breakfast or breakfast for dinner. I'm all about pancakes for dinner. Uh, but again, it just sparks happiness and they're so versatile. Um, you know, you can make them incredibly healthy. Uh, you can have alternative flours be really easily mixed into them to kind of suit your dietary needs. So, um, you know, it's just happiness on a plate. And what can... I told her we were going to be making pancakes at one o'clock. She was like, it's too late. I already had breakfast. I'm like, pancakes for dinner, mom. Come on, get with the program. It's it's pandemic time. There's no, rules. There's no rules for pancakes. There's no rules at all anymore. Um, but definitely no rules in regard, you know, have a chocolate chip cookie for breakfast, mom. Who cares? Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. And also pancakes for dinner. I feel like that's, that's good of any time, not, ju not just for pandemics. Yeah. Um, but also what is great about this meal as well. And, uh, one of the reasons why I chose to make it to kind of stockpile in my freezer, but these guys freeze fantastically. So you guys can make a bunch at home at once. You know, we do this in my, uh, in my apartment, I'll make big batches of them and then we'll just keep them in the freezer and pop them in the toaster oven. Um, you know, it's your at home ego situation. So definitely Wait, how long do they last in the freezer. Sorry. How long do they last in the freezer? I mean, if you wrap them really well, they can definitely last for a couple months. I doubt they'll last a couple months. But yeah, I mean, if you just get, um, I personally really like to double wrap when I'm freezing stuff to prevent freezer burn. Um, but if you saran wrap them and then get the really good like Ziploc freezer bags that prevent freezer burn, you're good to go, man. They're going to last you a couple months. I need to do that because, uh, you know, I get tired of eating the same thing. Like, you know, I'll make something and have leftovers and I'm eating it every meal for the next like two days. And, and I hate that. So anything I can freeze yeah. for a little while and, and then eat later, especially if it just like literally is that simple, throwing it on the thing and then yeah. I can eat it. Again. That sounds great. All right. So um, I'm going to let you take this away. I'm going to be on audio. So you might hear me pop in and ask some questions from. Um, people who are chatting in the Twitch feed, but, uh, you know, go do your thing and we're here, we're watching and we're learning. Sounds good. By all means, chime in if you have any questions or, you know, you just want to make a comment of how great everything is looking. Oh, yeah. Definitely be talking. So, so, you know, sorry. Okay. Awesome. All right. So as I said, making buttermilk pancakes, some really easy ingredients. Some of them you might have to go out to the grocery store to pick up on your own. But other than that, you should have everything in house. Um, so we're using AP flour, all purpose flour. Um, you could substitute that with any flour that you'd like. Sugar, baking powder and baking soda. Um, eggs. We have some buttermilk here, which is kind of 
you know, not so secret uh, ingredient as to why these turn out so good um, and some oil. So I'm going to start off by kind of talking about buttermilk really quick. Um, you know, one of those things that are definitely not in everyone's refrigerator. Um, it does have a really good shelf life. So it's one of those things that you can buy and kind of figure out other recipes to make with it. Um, but a good cheat, if you do not have buttermilk on hand, is you can take um, just some regular whole milk. You can use skim milk. Whole milk is better. But if you take a little bit of whole milk and add, um, for every cup, you add a tablespoon of either vinegar, just regular white distilled vinegar is fine, or lemon juice. Um, that's kind of going to give you the same effects that buttermilk is going to do in this or any recipe that it calls for. Um, one thing that it's going to do, it's going to start curdling your milk a little bit to give uh, it that really tangy vibe that buttermilk has in general. Um, but I'll kind of go, as I'm mixing the ingredients, I will explain a little bit later why buttermilk is very imperative to making the perfect fluffy pancake. And if you don't like fluffy pancakes, I suggest you sign off now because fluffy pancakes are life. Yeah, go home if you don't like fluffy pancakes, guys. <laughs> We're not making no flapjacks here. We're making pancakes, fluffy pancakes. Okay, so wait, I do have a little- Time out, time out, time out. Is there a difference between a pancake and a flapjack actually? like? I thought that was just sort of like what people called them. I thought it was like a regional naming thing. Is there actually a difference between a pancake and a flapjack? Honestly, I'm just talking smack right now. Um, I don't, I think it is just like regional nomenclature um, in regards to like a flapjack. I could be totally wrong. I don't actually know uh, the answer to that, but you know, everyone, you know, says either pancakes, flapjacks, brittle cakes. Um, I don't no, know if that is- People around here, we're pancake people. We're making pancakes, guys. Oh. We're making pancakes. All right, so I'm gonna adjust my camera so you can kind of see what's going on on my table here. So we're gonna be mixing up the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients completely separate. Um, this is going to kind of help with some steps later down the line. So I have two bowls that I'm gonna be working with, the smaller ones for my wets, bigger ones for my dries. So to start off, you guys can pardon my kind of janky kitchen situation with my bag of all-purpose flour, because I don't know, that's how I do it in my house. Um, so we're going to be starting off with two cups of all-purpose flour. Um, just pop that right into the bowl. Nothing crazy. So we got two cups of all-purpose flour. I got some sugar going. It's not going to add an incredible amount of sweetness, just a little bit. Um, you can omit it if you want, but I would suggest putting it in. Got two tablespoons sugar and then i got my other dry ingredients baking powder and baking soda so these guys um, are both imperative to have in the recipe in order to um, help with the natural leavening of the pancake so we got baking powder here um, this guy we're going to do two teaspoons worth what is the difference between baking powder and baking soda? So this is definitely one of the biggest questions I get often. So they are both both um, excuse me they are both sodium bicarbonate um, and they are both uh, active leaveners for baked goods. The difference between baking powder baking soda is roughly three to four times stronger than baking powder, given that baking powder is typically cut with usually cornstarch. Um, they both need an acid and a liquid to activate them. So baking powder um, already has acid added into it. So this guy only needs liquid um, to activate the carbon dioxide inside of whatever you are making, which helps with you know bread to rise, different doughs to rise or pancakes to become fluffy. Um, baking soda on the other hand needs both an acid and a liquid to activate it in. So the reason why baking soda, actually let me measure this guy before I forget. Um, the reason why buttermilk is kind of so imperative with this recipe is to help activate the baking soda inside of the recipe. So there is a ton of acidity inside of buttermilk naturally, um, which is why when I kind of suggested making the alternative buttermilk to add that vinegar into it or lemon juice that adds acidity as well. So baking soda is incredibly um, basic, you know, on the scale of basic neutrality and acidity. Um, so it definitely needs the acidity of buttermilk 
to help with the chemical reaction of allowing the pancakes to become fluffy. You know, you can kind of imagine how back when you were in, I don't know, elementary school or whatever grade you were um, doing those volcanoes where you added baking soda and shot some vinegar down into it and it erupted. That was the chemical reaction of the baking soda um, with the acidity of the buttermilk creating CO2. So essentially that's the same thing that's going to be happening in here. So, so baking soda is the, is the basic, is the basic one that needs the acid and baking powder is the, sorry, can you recap that? It's okay. No, baking powder is also a sodium bicarbonate that has acid already in it. So they are both, I know it's a little bit confusing. They are both leavening agents that will help doughs rise or CO2 production in baking products. The only difference is that baking powder is usually cut with cornstarch, so it's less strong than baking soda, um, and already has acid added into it, so you only need to add a liquid to activate it, whereas baking soda needs both an acid and the liquid to become active. But baking soda, um, like I said, is very strong. They aren't interchangeable one-to-one. -one. Baking soda will leave a very, um, I don't really know how to describe the aftertaste, but if you add too much baking soda, soda to something, it will kind of leave um, a very chemically aftertaste to it. Um, so you kind of have to be, you moderate how much you're adding if you are doing like a, trying to switch it up a little bit. Got it. Um, makes sense. I tried to explain that in layman's terms, but I know it's a little complicated, the science behind that guy. Yeah, um, chemistry last was always my <laughs> least favorite. Huh? Chemistry was always my least favorite class. Yeah, I was not good at it either. Um, lastly, I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of salt. So that is my dry mix. Mixing that evenly to distribute all of my baking powder, baking soda, and salt into the flour. So next up, I am going to be measuring my wet ingredients. So to that, I got my buttermilk, shaking it up a little bit. And I'm going to be adding two cups of buttermilk. Lovely. I got two eggs, regular guys. That was adding... an expert egg crack. Oh, oh yeah, thank you. Um, suggested never crack eggs on the side of the bowl, crack them on a flat surface. That prevents the shells from getting into your mix. Um, and next I'm gonna be adding a little bit of vegetable oil. Canola oil is totally fine. Um, any neutral tasting oil will do. And lastly, for my own liking, I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla extract. Um, you can add pretty much any extract that you would like. I'm a vanilla lover, so why not? I have it. I'm going to use it. Use almond extracts. Um, pancakes are incredibly versatile, so you can use cinnamon if you want it inside of it, any spices, whatever. I'm just going to make these guys pretty plain Jane. Um, so I'm going to be separately whisking up all of my wet ingredients. So one of the most important things when it comes to making pancakes is never over mix your batter. And I cannot explain this enough to people. That is the difference between getting a fluffy pancake and an incredibly flat pancake and flat pancakes are really sad. So um, what you're going to do, you're going to take your dry ingredients and you're going to pour your wet ingredients into the dry. Never pour dry into wet. That is going to cause clumps. That is going to cause you needing to mix more. And that's going to cause flat batters. I'm not having it. So we're going to be tossing all of the dry, uh, all of the wets into the dries. And we are going to mix this until just barely put together. So I start off with the whisk attach, uh, a whisk. Once I get most of my dries together. So at this point, I'd say it's pretty much evenly mixed. I got a little bit of clumps. I am kind of a perfectionist in this regard. So I'm going to take and set a rubber spatula and just kind of fold the rest of the mixture together. That's kind of going to prevent me from um, over mixing the batter. I do kind of want a little bit of clumps and then.
but the gravy and the buttermilk is going to be reacting with the baking soda, which is going to be allowing the CO2 to start activating inside of the batter. Um, so we want all of those bubbles to be forming. We want that before we're putting it onto the heat because those CO2 bubbles, when I activate it with the heat, are going to allow the pancake to kind of puff up and expand to the texture that we want, essentially. We want that chew inside of it. Um, the other thing that this is going to do, it's going to allow all of the ingredients to homogenize together, meaning um, the residual liquid that's inside of that is going to be absorbing into any clumps of flour that are inside of this mixture, which is why it's totally fine to have it a little bit um, clumpy, if you will. Um, everything will be fully homogenized by the time we let this sit for about five minutes. So I'm out of breath now talking about that. <laughs> So the next thing that we're going to do, um, I'm going to be a little bit bougie here and I'm going to make um, pretty quickly a separate syrup for my bananas. Um, so one, I actually ran out of maple syrup. So this is kind of um, a necessary thing to do so I can have a nice drizzle on top of my, uh, my pancake. But what this is also going to do, I am making essentially a liquid to deglaze my pan when I'm caramelizing my bananas. So I'm gonna start off with a cup of sugar. I'm gonna be putting my, so what I'm gonna be doing, I should just like this first. any extra liquid into it. I'm going to start off with a cup I of think sugar. We, we might have froze for a second. Can we just run that back? I don't know what happened, but I think the feed froze up for a second. So can we just start on syrup, um, the syrup making process one more time? Can we start from the top? Sorry about that. I'm not sure. Oh, you're fine. Okay. Um, so right now I'm making a, essentially what's called a one-to-one -one syrup. Pretty self-explanatory in the name. Um, meaning one part liquid, one part sugar. Um, so I'm starting off by taking, uh, you know what, I'm actually gonna take a little bit of this out. I'm gonna start off by taking um, two thirds a cup of sugar in, onto the heat. And what I'm doing is I'm making a dry caramel. The dry caramel is essentially taking a uh, regular white granulated sugar, applying it to heat, allowing it to, um, to melt down fully and then caramelize on its own versus adding a liquid to help caramelize it. Um, so at this point, I'm kind of going to let this chill a little bit, come up, um, and start to caramelize and hopefully it doesn't take too long. And if it does, we will kind of cheat and do something else because you know, one of the great things like about, yeah, the, one of the great things about this is that we've got nothing but time, you know, nothing but time. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'm. On a separate, th everything in the kitchen, I am totally about MacGyvering, alter like using alternative things. There are really, you know, everyone kind of says that, but there are really no rules when it comes to working in a kitchen. Pastry is a little bit different. Things need to be meticulous and counted and measured because um, that's when things will get messed up. But in general, I would say, you know, for example, I ran out of maple syrup. I'm making my own syrup now to help to glaze the pan. I'm going to flavor it with... Um, regular granulated sugar. I'm going to use some light brown sugar and then I'm feeling a little adventurous and I'm sure everyone at home who is, you know, bored and whatnot can chime in. I'm going to be adding a little bit of alcohol. One of my favorites, um, this is called Averna Amaro, a really delicious and bold, bitter tasting liquor, um, which, you know, we use all the time in my Italian restaurant, given it is an Italian uh, liquor, but I think it would be a really nice addition to the bananas, you know, just little things to tweak recipes to elevate it a slight bit, you know? Never too late for pancakes, never too early for Amaro. Hey, yo, that's what I like. So I got, I'm sorry, I gotta keep adjusting my cap here. I got my heat on, my sugar is starting to caramelize a bit. It's maybe a little hard to see just yet, but the bottom is starting to turn a beautiful, dark, golden, um, amber caramel color. Um, I am not applying a utensil to this. Instead, I'm kind of just shaking the pan here. Um, you don't want to agitate your sugar too much. Uh, that will cause the sugar to crystallize and clump up or become really gritty. Um, that is incredibly an ideal when making the dry caramel. So a little bit of patience goes a long way. Um, just moving it gently in the pan will allow the 
uh, heat to kind of redistribute in the sugar, which is what we're looking for. So I'm going to allow this to keep melting down. In the meantime, um, as I said, this is going to be a one-to-one -one syrup. So I've added two-thirds of a cup of granulated sugar. I'm going to make this a full one cup by adding another third of dark of light brown sugar, dark brown sugar is fine, um, to the mix after this is fully melted. So I'm going to measure that out ahead of time. I got a nice packed one third cup there. And then on the side as well, I have one cup of water. Um, you can honestly, when you're making caramels like this, you can I'm gonna put this back up. You can use pretty much any liquid that you want to deglaze your sugar in. And what that is going to do is going to essentially make your simple syrup for you. Um, you can use apple juice. You can use wine if you want. If you're going to feel a little crazy. Um, I'd say the most basic one is definitely uh, just adding water. And that's going to make a really beautiful, uh, simple syrup. Anything left over can be a simple syrup for um, cocktails or iced teas, whatever you want. I want an iced tea right now. Honestly, same. I've been, um, I bought a bunch of like turmeric and ginger thinking I was going to make this like incredibly healthful elixir for myself in hopes to kind of beat COVID's ass in like some sort of natural way. Um, I have yet to do so. It's kind of still chilling there, but maybe the simple syrup will inspire my tea making, my healthful tea making. You're going to make a Corona curing tea? Yeah, we'll try. All we can do is try, right? <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure the president would promote it. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to pop the camera back down again. Um, my caramel is now, it's super hard to tell this, but my caramel is kind of turning into this really beautiful amber color. Again, that is just all of the sugar slowly melting down over medium heat. Um, I, after most of the sugar granules itself have dissolved, I did um, allow myself to pick up a utensil and start slowly moving it around the pan, um, allowing any chunks to dissolve any further. So at this point, I am going to very shortly deglaze it with all of my water. Um, and with that, I'm going to use a whisk um, and a relatively long whisk at that, because when I do so, it is going to smoke up quite a bit and a lot of steam is going to be released. Um, so if you're ever going to deglaze a pan with anything, number one, steam will be created. Be cautious, watch your hands and your face because you can get burned that way. Um, but also I would say kind of pop your heat to a little bit lower um, and that should prevent you from completely, you know, giving yourself a dry caramel steam facial, essentially. <laughs> so, safety first, guys. Safety first. Safety first. Anything to keep you out of hospitals right now, the better, you know? So, switching to maybe way too large of a whisk, but that's kind of all I got right now. I have one cup of water that I'm going to use to deglaze this pan. Um, and like I said, I'm going to be turning my heat down a little bit. Um, I do have my water at room temperature versus cold, the closer in temperature, the liquid that you're adding to whatever you're deglazing, the less kind of steam that's going to be heating up and the less that your sugar is going to kind of crystallize after you add it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. While we're spinning, I'm going to be streaming this in, not dumping it in. <sighs> I feel like I can smell it, but I can't. <laughs> that would be crazy if you could. So, I mean, I wish you could because it smells, I mean, quite nice, actually. So, I have added my water to the pan. Got, like, a beautiful, so a little bit of sugar has crystallized onto the end of my whisk. When I bring this back up to a boil, everything should dissolve and um, homogenize back together. So, I'm just going to keep working that guy. But in the meantime to this, while I let this come back up to a boil, I am going to add, and honestly, I'm just going to eyeball it personally. I'm going to be adding a little bit of my Amaro, maybe like another third of a cup's worth. Um, you can totally substitute this out with a nice dark rum. Um, any type of aperitif, I think, would be really nice, not to get too fancy. But if you're feeling boozy and you just want a little bit of a kick into your simple syrup, just add whatever you got in the cupboard. Um, I'd say darker liquors are definitely better. They're going to be a little bit more bold and rounded flavor to kind of help 
pair with this lovely pancake pairing. I so think now, everybody's feeling a little boozy these days. Yeah, so you know why not? Share the love with your breakfast, dinner, brunch, after dinner, snack. I don't know. Everything, everything goes now. Who cares? Yes. <laughs> so I added my um, Averna to this. I'm going to add my last one third cup of brown sugar. Um, the reason that I didn't add this to the granulated sugar to dissolve, um, there is a decent amount of moisture that is added to uh, light brown sugar. Um, so that would have kind of caused my sugar mixture to crystallize a little bit too fast. So instead what I'm doing, especially since brown sugar is a bold enough flavor on its own, in my opinion, I'm just going to allow that to melt down into the syrup on its own. So this guy is looking good. And I'm going to take this off the burner and kind of allow it to chill. So um, hard to see, but I got this beautiful, really delicious smelling simple syrup kind of working right now. Um, and I'm going to put that on my back burner to kind of chill and cool off a little bit as I am going into starting to make pancakes. So I'm going to bring this guy back up for a second. Organize my life. So pancakes. I wish I kind of took a picture of the before and after, but this pancake mixture has almost um, almost doubled in size due to the leaveners of the baking soda and the baking powder reacting with the buttermilk. Um, it's a very, I don't really know how to describe it, but it's kind of like a jiggly mixture to it, uh, which is exactly what I'm looking for, which means that there is just beautiful CO2 production inside of that batter, which means that it's going to be a pancake success. So I'm going to go ahead and start cooking these bad boys up because I would say this mix is completely ready to go. Um, so let's try and angle the camera here. So pans, um, people, you know what, let me... Let me educate on pancake making first before I jump into it. Um, yeah, give us the knowledge. Drop the knowledge, Victoria. <laughs> drop it. <laughs> Let me drop the knowledge really quick. So pancakes should never be a rushed process. Um, in my opinion, I like to only put one pancake per pan. Um, if we don't do that, it's never going to be evenly cooked unless you have like a flat top uh, oven situation, which I'm sure most people don't at home. If you have more than one pan and you kind of want to get it done quickly, at least set two pans up versus putting like two or three pancakes inside of your one pan. So what I like to do is I like to put batter right in the center of my um, of my pan that I'm using and allow the burner to be like directly underneath that one pancake. That allows even distribution of heat, even rising of the pancake and beautiful browning on the outside. So that's rule number one. Rule number two, you need a you need a nonstick pan. Um, there's no way that you're going to be able to do this relatively successfully in a cast iron. Um, if you do, hit me up. Please tell me your secrets because I've never been able to do that. But I just use a really, um, you know, honestly, my, my nonstick pan is not fantastic, um, but it really does the job in regards to making, you know, allowing even cooking across the pancake. Um, so if you have a really good nonstick pan, like foolproof, you don't have to add any grease into the, you don't need to add butter or pan spray or anything. There's enough oil in this pancake powder to allow you, allow the pancake to flip uh, relatively easily. In my case, since I don't have a fantastic nonstick pan, I use a little bit of pan spray. No shame in it. You know, it's going to help you out in regards to, um, for lack of a better word, lubing your pan so that your batter isn't sticking. Um, but instead for me, instead of directly spraying it onto the pan like this, um, and over the heat, I in turn spray a paper towel and I will wipe this paper towel, um, after every pancake that I make, I'll rewipe the paper towel that is pan sprayed onto the pan itself. Um, and that prevents too much grease buildup from happening and just enough to coat the bottom of my pan. Um, and that's my preferred method and it's worked out great. That is so helpful. Like I've always tried to make like, yeah, I'm not patient enough and I always throw them in and they're cooked unevenly. But then my question is this, if you cook them one yeah. at a time, how do you keep them warm when you're on like your 10th pancake, you know? Very true. So 
Um, you can, I mean, this is what I do. I have a really great toaster oven that has a million settings on it. I usually just put that on like my keep warm setting, which puts it at like 150 to 200 degrees. Um, you can do the same thing with your oven. Uh, it is a little, you know, it uses energy and makes your kitchen warm if it's the summertime, whatever. Um, but that is usually when I'm making big batches of this, if I, you know, for me and my roommates, when I'm ever making breakfast, I will pop the oven to about 200 degrees. Um, just as I'm flipping my pancakes out, I'll just flip it right into, um, to a cookie sheet that's in the oven, ready to go. Um, but like I said, a lot of the time I am making big batches of this and I am going to be freezing it anyway. So I allow them to cool fully regardless. So, um, but if you are doing big batches, very low temperature oven, will keep them nice and hot. All right. So. Wait, hold on. I got a question. Somebody, somebody in the chat is asking, is this like, if, if, if this is a bananas foster pancake situation is that what's happening here sort of it, let's call it inspired by bananas foster um i can't say verbatim that it is but essentially we are making caramelized bananas it involves alcohol maybe a little flambéing action will happen if things catch on fire i'd say that this is officially a bananas foster's pancake but until we see fire before our eyes i would say bananas foster inspired <laughs> It's a, it's a bananas, uh, bananas adopter's pancake. I'm sorry? Bananas adopter's pancake. It's like yeah, a step yeah. fostering, it's you know? You fully adopt. Branching off, branching off from that. Okay. Um, give me a second. got to open my window because it's actually getting quite warm in my kitchen. And I totally have a problem where uh, my cheeks turn, like, crazy red when I get overheated. And I don't want that to happen. One of my nicknames back in the kitchen used to be Sweet Cheeks because – Whenever I would be cooking over like our hot tops or our fryers, I would get so overheated that my face would turn like a bright, like a red delicious apple, and um, I kind of hated it. And so I'm trying to prevent that from happening right now. Anywho, okay, sweet so I'm turning my <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so I'm turning my heat on. Um, I got my pan ready, and I'm keeping my heat at a consistent medium to medium low. Um, and that is also incredibly important. If you are putting your heat up to high, what's going to happen is one side of your pancake is going to get like scorched. Um, it's going to cook too quickly. You're going to flip it over. The other side is going to cook really quickly. And then you're going to have just batter in the middle of your pancake because you're not allowing it time to bake. And like, baking is all about patience. I can't express that enough, especially to like anyone that's on like the savory side of cooking, like whenever they enter pastry, when I would be working with them, they would just try to rush the process of things. And I feel like you gotta, it's all about patience, patience and letting things rest and letting things cook the amount of time that it needs to cook. Um, so patience is key. So I'm keeping my, my skillet is definitely warm enough already. I'm keeping it. I got a burner that goes from like low to high and it's got like six settings of heat i'm keeping it on a consistent four um if i feel that it's getting too hot i'll kind of pop it off if it's scorching hot um i totally completely like will take it off the heat and just be like a crazy person airing out my pan in front of my face allowing the heat to kind of escape off of the pan until i'm ready to make my next pancake um call me a psychopath but you know this is what you do when you're passionate about pancakes you really go the extra mile here <laughs> so pancake. I got my heat. Yeah. What'd you say? I called you a pancake psycho. That's okay. I got you know what? Maybe we'll get a hashtag going. Um, I'm over consistent medium heat. I got my pan sprayed um, paper towel. That's what this is called. And I'm just gonna do a quick little smear on the outside of my pan. A smear is you know an appropriate kitchen term, so use it often. So I'm gonna pop my camera feed down here again and you know going back to me being a pancake psycho i like to measure my pancakes out with um like a cookie scoop situation here i got a relatively big one um i like really even everything the same size um if you don't have one of these guys i'd say like a third of a cup or a quarter cup measure is fantastic um in regards to portioning it out and scooping it out into your pan so i'm also going to pan spray this guy to make sure that everything gets evenly, uh, you know, gets out of the scoop, essentially. So I don't think I've ever seen one of those scoopers before. I'm very excited to see how it works. Um, it's incredibly self-explanatory. Uh, I wish it was a little bit more interesting, but it's definitely... Well, maybe it's not interesting to me because I just can't use it all the time. But 
Essentially, you're just gonna be taking a nice old scoop of batter and putting it right in the center of a pan. So what I like to do upon doing this, I'll kind of like pre-shape my pancake. I'm gonna add a little bit more actually. I hope this pancake comes out beautiful because if not, I feel, uh, I'm gonna feel pretty ashamed, honestly, but. So fluffy already. I'm like, I'm very, very excited <laughs> yes, to see how this if you look at the batter here where it kind of scooped out from and you see all of, um, it kind of looks like a shaggy batter essentially. Um, and again, that's just kind of all the CO2 production inside of the, uh, the pancake itself. So I have migrated my pancake so that it's right over the center of the burner so that everything is evenly distributed on the outside over here. This guy, I wish I could zoom in. So essentially what I'm looking for is the sides of the pancake to start kind of crisping up a little bit. I can smell that it's already getting done. You can kind of cheat and check underneath your pancake a little bit. And if you can get, you know, fully around, I would say your pancake is ready to flip. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Definitely not the best flip and that's okay. You got to commit to your flips. If you don't commit to your flips, it flops. Ain't no hat flipping. <laughs> Gotta commit to your flips. You gotta play. So I'm pretty content with that guy. I have to say a little embarrassed on my end, but it's okay. We're gonna get over the embarrassment and just continue to educate you guys on I'll have a redemption shot, I swear. So medium heat. I mean it's pretty self-explanatory. I would say that um, you know, trusting your instincts a little bit when it comes to making anything. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just have to fail a lot of times before you get things correct. The amount of pancakes I have messed up in my lifetime is astronomical and a little bit embarrassing. So you got to mess up sometimes. You'll learn from your mistakes. It's fine. Oh, my God. It, it looks so fluffy. <laughs> so a good way to check if it's done, um, if you kind of don't trust it, is if you flip it back over, kind of pierce the inside a little bit. I see that mine still has a little bit of raw batter underneath, so I'm going to flip it back over again, um, keep it on that medium heat for another minute or two, and then it should be beautifully done. Oh, my God, it's so hot in my kitchen right now. I'm like sweating bullets. You can't stand the heat. Get out of the kitchen. But it's my job, so it's contradictory. Stay in your chair. <laughs> Sweat your butt off. Just drink a lot of water. That's what I'll do. Just keep drinking. Stay hydrated, people. So I would say this is a beautifully done, beautifully fluffy pancake. I'm going to make, make another one because what else are we doing aside from you guys watching me flip some flapjacks, flip some griddle cakes, some pancakes? No, they're pancakes. I did this very early on. Those those flapjack people left left the left the Twitch already. They're not watching. We got rid. Of, oh my god. Okay, I got rid of them. Thank God. All right, so my pan's a little hot. I'm gonna you know do the pancake psychopath action and kind of cool it off a little bit, which is totally fine. I'm gonna take my pan sprayed guy. I guess I should. Here, yeah, it's very hot actually. Pam's paper towel, give it another zhuzh around. I'm gonna go ahead and flip another guy off there. That scooper nice. looks really fun, I'm not gonna lie. I got a couple of them, and they are, you know, essential tools. I am, you know, let's see, I got this. This size guy here, good for some cookie making. Um, I definitely love like very equally sized baked goods, cookies, pancakes, yada, yada. So these scoopers are kind of a godsend in my opinion. Um, but again, that might just be a little bit of, a little bit of OCD and that's okay. They're, they're like really fun tools. I remember my grandmother had a really cool ice cream scooper back in the day and I would just play with it all the time. Ice cream scoopers are essential. Was it the kind? Did it have like the like the mechanism to scoop it out? What kind of what kind of scooper was it? I, okay, okay, okay. Actually, it was a plastic Mickey Mouse one, and it did have a mechanism, but it wasn't like the the go around the bottom mechanism. It was just like a little like eject flap that like pushed whatever it was it whatever was in it out. So it yeah. was terrible, but it was really fun. Yeah, no, gotta love. 
gotta love your kitchen gadgets. Um, I definitely have my. I'm sorry. It was better than a spoon. Better than a spoon for sure. You gotta get like the nice, the nice shape. Gotta get the beautiful scoop on the outside. I'm very picky with my ice cream scoops. We have like maybe four different varieties of ice cream scoops back at Del Posto, and you know, I have my. Everyone has their favorite. Got like the more rounded edge one. You have ones with the mechanisms on it, but um, you know, everyone's got their favorites. Man, I wish you guys could like see the angle of. I sound like such a psychopath, truthfully, with how passionately I talk about pancakes. But if you look at the angle, it's, I mean, the pancake seriously has risen about maybe a half an inch. Um, and that's just all beautiful, fluffy deliciousness in there. And I'm really, really psyched about it because I'm having pancakes for lunch today or breakfast. This is my first meal of the day. So I guess it's breakfast. I'm psyched too because I'm going to have pancakes tomorrow following these steps. So, like, I'm pretty excited already. Love it. You got to send me a picture. Let me know how that work, works out for you. <laughs> All right. So I'd say, and again, like medium low heat. Pancakes shouldn't take like three seconds to cook up. Um, you know, patience allows really good product. So that's what we're making. We're making really premium pancakes. Um, I do have to ask, are we sticking to like the one hour time situation? There are no rules. We can take a little longer. Okay. I'm going to say after this pancake, I'm going to show you guys how to caramelize the bananas and then we'll have a beautiful plate up. Love it. So we got a lovely pancake beautifully cooked on the inside to make a lovely dual stack. You know, the perfect little stack of pancakes on cute little plate. Ooh, they thick. Yeah, they thick. They thick. All right. So, cleaning up my workstation a little bit. I'm going to take my pan off the heat for like two minutes uh, because I want the pan to kind of cool off a little bit. So, next step up, step up that I'm going to be doing is caramelizing my bananas. So, on the side over here, Victoria, can you get a little closer to the microphone? I, the the audio changed a little bit. I don't know if something's covering it or if you just stepped further away, but it became a little hard to hear you. Can you hear me better now? Uh, still a little. Uh, still a little. Is it in? Is is your mic in something? It seems like it's a little like tinny. Um, no, but I can still hear you, so keep it going. Okay. Oh, that's better. Um, better? No. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what happened. Nothing has changed on my end. Uh, if I speak louder, does that help? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Okay, so we're going to be taking these bananas. I have them. I've taken the peels off, and I'm just going to cut them in half. Like, yay. Pretty diligently, bringing it up to high heat. All right, so it's kind of hard to explain it. 
to do, but I'm doing my best job. So we got the bananas here, and what I'm going to be doing is going to be taking the flat side of the banana and dipping it into the sugar, all right? I'm going to be doing that with all of the pieces. And as this comes up to a relatively high heat, I'm going to be taking these bananas, putting them sugar side down onto the pan. And what that's going to do is create a beautiful outside caramelization of the banana itself, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So we got a beautiful sugar coated banana going right onto the heat. How high is that burner, Victoria? We got a medium high heat being rocked on these bananas. Okay. And it's really, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, you're on mute, but I was able to hear you <laughs> or on read your lips. Um, so essentially, uh, you want to just kind of let this chill out. You do not want to be moving these bananas around because that is going to be breaking up the sugar that is currently crystallizing on the flat side of the banana. So what I'm looking for here, it's kind of hard to see, but there's all these little bubbles kind of forming around the banana right now. Um, what that is doing, that's all of the sugar crystallizing um, and becoming like a beautiful dark caramel on the one side of the banana. So just let them kind of chill out. I'm looking for browning along the outside and it's going to happen pretty quick. But what I'm going to be doing is once the, the bananas are caramelized and they have browned, I'm going to be taking my um, my sugar syrup that I made with the Amaro and the brown sugar. I'm going to deglaze my pan. What that's going to do is going to release all the caramelized bananas from the pan itself. I'm going to give it a little shake and we're going to turn them over and they should be really beautifully colored. Um, and then at that point, I'll flip the bananas over. I'll let this sugar syrup kind of reduce a little bit in the pan, become a little bit thicker. And then that's what's going to, you know, beautifully dress my uh, my bananas. So I kind of got a ladle ready. Victoria, let me ask you something. Somebody in the comments is asking, um, does it make a difference if you don't heat the pan before you put the bananas in? So if you sugar the bananas, then put them on on a non-heated pan, then heat the pan, what would that do to the process? Um, Essentially what that's going to do, you kind of want to add, introduce the bananas to a hot pan. If you add it to a cold pan, um, the sugar is going to start melting immediately upon adding it onto the pan. Um, so it's not going to create as like sharp and crisp of a line um, as you're going to want with the banana caramelizing on, on the pan. Um, that will kind of just allow the sugars to slowly start melting off the banana. Um, so sorry to kind of give a shorthand answer to that because it's pretty much ready. I got, um, maybe it's a little hard to see, but the bananas are kind of have a beautiful caramelization around each of them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my syrup. Is this, yeah, you guys can see good enough. I'm going to take my syrup. I'm going to start to glaze my pan. So what this is going to do it's going to start releasing my bananas from the pan itself. It's going to start um, becoming this really beautiful thick syrup. And these bananas are looking mighty fine, if I do say so myself. Oh, I kind of messed that one up a little bit. It's all right. So these bananas, if you can see them, have a beautiful caramelization on the outside. Um, it's going to have like a nice kind of crisp sugar, almost like creme brulee feel to them, which is really nice. And then my syrup itself is reducing a little bit. Any bits of bananas are kind of deglazing off of the pan and allowing it to, uh, you know, even more, give more flavor to the syrup itself. Just fantastic. Oh um, man, I wish I could. I wish we could um, live stream the smell of this. I bet it smells so good in your apartment right now. I gotta say, it smells pretty delicious. So I'm going to take this off the heat, and we're gonna do a little plate up of this bad boy. So we got my pancake stack, beautiful and ready to go. I got some banana here. I'm gonna just 
chop them in half. Put a couple on top. Oops. Drop them off camera. You guys didn't see that, so it's fine. Or maybe you did. I don't know. Doesn't matter. I'm in my home. There's no rules. We already discussed that. So these bananas are like nice and beautifully tender. They're nice and soft and super sweet. And what can I use to drizzle some syrup on? A ladle. So I got my syrup right over the top. I could have even reduced that down a little bit more, make it a little bit thicker, but this is still going to be beautiful and delicious. Got to wipe off the plate for, you know, the nice plating because we're perfectionists here. But we got a cute little, cute little plate of pancakes ready to go. That's kind that of looks amazing. I got to say, that's like happiness on a plate right there. I don't know how good of a job I am at, you know, being a hand model with this, but I guess all I can do is just take a bite and. Yeah, yeah I want to watch you take a bite and enjoy vicariously, please. And burn my mouth. Pretty hot. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you definitely burned your mouth. I can tell. Yep. <laughs> Are you Just okay? It was worth it, though. You know, the bananas are freaking hot, obviously. They just came off the heat, but I couldn't resist it. This is like, I don't know. It's nothing crazy. It's no, like, you know, food gourmet. But you got, like, I hold on. Let's see if I'm going to I'm gonna give you guys, like, a cross-section of this pancake really quick. Okay, so you can... <laughs> Section. Let's see what we're working with on the inside. Like you got that. like a fluffy, beautiful, like voluminous pancake right there. And um, I don't know. You just can't beat it. That looks it's definitely burnt in my mouth. My God. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. I have no one to blame but myself. And I got, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about yeah. it. Well, we, we all learned a lot. Um, I am really looking forward to making these pancakes tomorrow. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. This is going to be my breakfast. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to um, do like a quick little type up of the recipe. I'll put it on my Instagram story and you can share it to the stimulus page for whoever maybe wants it. And, or they can directly message me um, at Torkster for any questions if you are pertaining to this or any baking inquiries at all, I'm always happy to help and share knowledge. It's my favorite thing to do. Victoria, well, thank you so much. Thank you for the, the first episode of Need to Know. I hope everybody learned something and had a good time. And maybe he's enjoying some pancakes right now or tomorrow. Or um, what are we doing tomorrow? You're back on tomorrow, right? Uh, yeah, I haven't quite figured that out yet. But uh. we will <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. Next week, the we'll try and, next week, we'll try and map it out so that we can get people um, ingredients beforehand and they can follow along as we're doing it and, um, you know, just uh, make it like a, a, a more tutorial process that people can follow in the future. Sounds fantastic. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much, Victoria. And um, enjoy those pancakes. I'm super jealous right now. Um, mm -hmm. But enjoy them for me. Enjoy them for all of us who watched. And we'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Ha, ha, ha.